Now I think I did okay getting those two in. I put the front apron on and just raised and lowered the bumper bracket until it was centered in the hole. The bumpers will have some adjustability both in and out and up and down. So if they're a little off center or they're not quite straight, I'm not too worried about that. Because like I said, they're adjustable. So I think those are okay. However, 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 up on the top of them, you probably noticed there's an opening up here because these suckers were not meant for a late model Beetle. So I'm going to have to make a patch that drops down inside of here so that way they can be welded in on the top. Currently they are only welded in on the bottom and just right here in the top corner. So yep, I need to make a patch for that. Uh, it looks like it shouldn't be too hard. I'll probably just make something out of um, just some flat bar. Just make a piece of flat bar that drops right into that hole hold it in with some magnets or something and then just weld it right into place. I think that'll be the strongest thing. These are bumpers, of course. I do want a little bit of strength there. Otherwise, I would just use a piece of sheet metal because uh, <laughs> it would be just for looks. But in this case, it's actually gonna provide some structure. The good news is, is that the this is a late model front end and the bumper brackets are actually on the other side of the fender right here. So this is all reinforced from the back side, even though it wouldn't normally be on an earlier Beetle. Not with the same big, chunky bracket, anyway. There's going to be a lot more strength in this area than it would be normally on an early Beetle. Well, let's uh, see if I can make some patches for the top of that and get these suckers closed up. All right, and there it is with the apron on. You can see our brackets in there, and they're looking pretty centered. The apron is actually a little bit high on this side. I need to knock it down just a little bit. But otherwise, the brackets do look good. Um, it will move a little bit on that side when I knock it down to place. You can actually look at the uh, the top of the apron here, and you can see the little um, scallop that's cut out where the windshield washer bottle normally sits. And that's what I use as a guideline to get these two straight. That one, uh, when I made that piece for in there, I measured everything out. So that thing is level with the body. And in fact, where the gas tank sits is actually a level surface, and that was not altered at all. So yep. We can square it off on that and make sure that it's right. And it looks pretty good. I mean, I think we're okay. I think we're gonna be all right. All right, let's get back on it. We. Welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> back today with my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. 
And right here on this front end, I need to work on this front apron, as you've probably already seen, because I did a cold open to this video, that this apron doesn't really belong on the front of this car. This is a 1956 Beetle, but because of when I rebuilt it, I had to um, graft a different front end onto it because Eleanor's front end was just so nasty and rotten. I mean, it was bad. It was nothing that I wanted to get into rebuilding. It was actually just, yeah. <laughs> so I used the donor front end, everything from the dashboard forward to here. It was a crashed front end, so I had to, to really cut a lot of pieces out of it and rebuild it with as much 56 parts as I could. This uh, front cowl, uh, cowl, oh geez, I don't even know if that's what it is. But this area that you see right here, where the body stamping is, where the VIN number would live, all the little plates and patches all go in there. These are the 56 holes for accessing the uh, steering box, depending upon whether you're left or right hand drive, of course. And then up inside here, these are the bumper brackets. Because early model bumpers would go through the apron, whereas later model bumpers came through the fenders. Now this being a 69, it still has the fender brackets on it from a 69, so that makes the front end here much stronger than it would be. But I have to get these brackets welded into place behind this apron. And in addition to that, this floor inside the trunk area here where the spare tire goes is several inches short. And there's a reason for that. And it was uh, because it was just full of buckshot. I mean, it was like just holes, <laughs> lots of holes rusted. It didn't help the fact that this front end was kind of crumpled up had it had it been in a wreck uh, previously but yep I had to cut several inches off of it what I've also learned is that right here on the bottom of this apron you see right here there's a point on the bottom Let's say later beetles are more squared it's more flat on the bottom here that's something to, to notice as well as a longer and deeper hood the apron is just a little bit longer on the bottom you probably see it a little better from the inside here and this floor being a 69 floor is pretty straight the only reason why it's bowed down in the middle is because I started to bend it a little bit. But yeah, I need to compensate for that, so when I put this apron on, I need to make some adjustments. And make this work, of course. So this is what we're working on today, so as always, licky likey, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly, that we get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DougShit.net for all my different social media. And down below this video, you'll see some merch. There's a few different t-shirt designs that I put on there, and it's also some mugs and a few other things. If you're interested in having something Duckman Cycles related, that's right, representing me. And uh, I think what happens in the future, if you wear Duckman merch, and you make a video while wearing it and talk about it, I'll send you a sticker. How does that sound? I think that's cool. Sticker designs are still in the works. Um, I'm not doing them. That's why they're taking friggin' forever. I did the t-shirts though. When I finally got down to it, it took me only a couple days, but <laughs> neither here nor there. That's not what I usually do. So I, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get into that in another video. We're gonna resume work on this, wherever it was that we left off before I started the introduction. And uh, thanks for watching. That worked out pretty well. That piece of flat bar was one and one quarter inches and it was the exact width that needed to drop into place. It just needed a triangular cut on each end. And as you probably saw, I played with it a little bit until I got it into place. Now it's ready to be welded in. I'm gonna do exact same thing on the other side, but I'm quite satisfied with that. I think that's gonna work out nicely, real nicely. Well, I'm gonna finish welding that sucker in and then we'll get over to the other side. Alright, 
I really like the way that turned out. Boxed in real nicely. It's got some decent welds all the way around it. A little sloppy, but they're strong. And uh, after that, I hit it uh, with a sander a little bit and then threw on some of my favorite, which will prevent it from rusting. Of course, that's phosphoric acid, which isn't really cat piss, but you guys get the joke. And uh, I'm gonna hit the other side. Very good, coming along nicely. All right, well, let's see how today's work turned out. I've got a set of T-bars, oh, and no, I'm not going to be using them. This is just something I'm going to test to make sure that everything is aligned straight and that it looks properly. Um, I don't know. Guess there's not a left and a right side, they're the same. Pretty cool, all right. Well, before we get into that, you know what has to go on? I almost forgot. <laughs> We gotta put the apron on first. There we go. All right. I think that looks pretty good. Eh, it's approximate. I'm not welding it in yet. I don't think that really matters. <laughs> Ow. All right. Oh, that T-bar's bent a little bit. All right, well, we'll play with that. All right, well, there it is. Um, T-bars are both bent a little bit, and they're both bending in opposite directions, which means actually they probably do matter which side I put them on. Uh, I think somebody modified these T-bars. These came off of a Carmen gear that I, I used to have years ago, and that's probably what's going on there. But they are adjustable. I can bring them up a little bit if I need to, or of course I can push them back down. So there's uh, a bit of play in there. I will, <laughs> well these aren't staying on, but I will switch the sides if I was going to keep these on here. There's the rubber gogi in place. Either that or I would just bend them back to where they need to be. But coming all the way back here, looking forward at it, 
let me get you centered. That's, if I'm off center, people say stupid things. <laughs> it's like, hey, duck man, you know, your, your bus is, is not symmetrical. Yeah, well, now my beetle's not symmetrical either. Anyway, you're looking at it dead on. You can see everything looks straight. I think those are gonna work out just fine. Of course, once again, those are not going to be on this car. I'm going to use proper chrome bumpers from 1956. Well, pretty much any early bumpers from 67 and before. And I'm gonna make a set of super wide ones to match these fenders. Because a stock bumper on here is gonna look really stupid because it's just not wide enough. It's gonna be like six inches too short on the front and like nine inches too short on the back. So, <laughs> Well, I think we're at a wonderful stopping point for today. Yes, very, very happy here. Well, as I said, wonderful stopping point for today. I'm glad I've got those bumper brackets on there. That was something that I've been putting off well, for a long time. I was a little intimidated by it. I don't know why. I think I wanted to get a set of bumpers with a set of brackets, or at least a set of brackets and a two by four, and then bolt it on there straight and make sure that it's not gonna be crooked. But the thing that I didn't think about is that the brackets have an adjustability into it. So if I make the brackets a little bit crooked, um, I can still play with them on the outside. And even if for some reason there's not enough play in them, I can wallow out the holes in, in the bolt-on brackets and make them fit. So not the least bit concerned about it, not at all. But these T-bars are definitely bent. <laughs> definitely bent. I probably should have put them on opposite sides. But what's done is done. They're not staying on there anyway. In fact, they're gonna come back off because I still have to or down in the spare tire area. But that's gonna be a video for tomorrow. So thanks you guys for watching, really do appreciate it. Give me that licky licky like. You don't forget to comment and subscribe. Pluck that dingle bell, that way you get updates every time that I upload the video. Don't forget to check out duckshit.net, which is my website. It shows all of my different social media links. So if you wanna follow me on Instagram, Facebook, even on my Twitter, Twitter, Twitter account, I, I've got one. I don't use it much, but if you'd like to follow me there, you can use it. And down below in the video description, as well as just above the video description, just below this video, you can find my merch, that's right. Duckman Cycles now has t-shirts. And wouldn't you believe it, that uh, Teespring, the company that's doing my t-shirts, copyright strike me on my own logo. Yeah, that's right, my own logo. They said it was copyrighted and I probably shouldn't be using it. So anyway, I'm working on a little bit of a, of a, of a, a, a debate with them on that, which they have not responded to. It's been almost a week, and I would say if they don't fix that sometime soon, then I'm gonna be pulling the plug on them. So if you see an order there that you like, get on it. They will fulfill it. I'm not going to shut them down until all the orders are, of course, fulfilled. But uh, yeah, I want to have Duckman Cycles, the VW Garage logo that you see at the beginning of every one of my videos on a t-shirt. I think that's important. So you probably agree with me. So anyways, thanks you guys for watching. Appreciate it. See you next time.